Hi everyone, and welcome back to Butchery 101. I'm Christina Glenoga, and today we're talking about pork belly and bacon. Part two. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and if you like this video, please hit a like button for me. I actually did a pork belly fabrication slash bacon curing video a little over a year ago and not to toot my own horn fam, but it's pretty dang baller. Here's the link if you want to go check it out. It covers just about everything you need to know about making bacon from home, uh, making bacon at home from bone in pork belly, including the cure recipe and method. So we're just going to pick it up from there because there are a couple, just a couple steps to really achieve amazing at home bacon. Plus, we're going to cover the ways in which I've utilized the homemade bacon in my own kitchen with some bacon cooking tips. Also, I no longer have the smoker available like I did when I made that other video. And so today's episode will show y'all how to achieve these things without a smoker. And full disclosure, I nearly lit that smoker on fire last summer because I wasn't properly trained on how to use it. So please be careful. I've used many different types of smokers in professional settings and they're all just a little bit different, but they all use fire and that should not be taken lightly. I also posted a whole pig butchery video you can check out here, but just so y'all can see where the belly comes from, here are the necessary points of getting to the belly. That's taking off the shoulders, and then here I'm separating the hams from the loin. And I can't find any footage of separating the bellies from the loin because maybe I just misplaced it. Anyway, if I do find it, I'll post it here later. So here's me taking the spare ribs off of the belly, and again, please see the other pork belly video for commentary. Also take note of how much larger that whole slab of belly is in the other video because this is the exact same cut. Um, a couple things that are different this time around, aside from just the size that I mentioned, um, I left the skin on and I'm so glad to say that my partner figured out how to make really wonderful crispy skin on bacon. More on that later in the video. Again, I don't have a smoker right now, so instead of smoking these, I slow roasted them in a slow oven. Sorry, in a low oven. <laughs> That's a method from the charcuterie book by Paulson and Ruhlman. And even though the results aren't smoky in flavor, homemade bacon is still so much better than the store-bought stuff. I'm super curious about using smoked salt or liquid smoke in the cure mix, so let me know in the comments if you have tried either of these in your bacon journeys. Oh, and one more thing I did differently this time around was doing a 3% cure instead of 2% like in the other video. And now after having tasted this bacon, I can definitely say that I would have preferred a 3.5 or 4%. I personally really like it when the saltiness from the bacon in a dish is like the main source of salt. I might even try a 5% in the future just to see where it tops out and like where it gets too salty. team interrupting really quickly just to let y'all know just to remind y'all about how best to support this channel and to let y'all know about some of the other products that uh, butchery 101 has available for offer go ahead and hit pause if you want to read up on any of more details from the stuff from patreon and then also we definitely have some stuff available on our talk page too so feel free to hit up the links in the description below and now back to the show If y'all don't know by now, I am a stickler for two things, sanitation and labeling. <laughs> so I definitely wanted to show y'all my labeling scheme again. It's always name, date, and if there are multiples of the same product, I really like to label with like one of four or two of four, etc. That way, future me, weeks from now, will be able to pull stuff from the freezer and know exactly what it is instead of doing like, I don't know, it's just like the weird shuffle of like, uh, how old is this bacon exactly? Anyway, you can also see how I turned the tops of the bags inside out to keep the zip seals as clean as possible. That's so important for Ziploc bags, um, obviously because like 
it, it helps the zippers like close effectively, but it's also really vital for uh, vacuum seal bags too, um, because the seal just w won't work if there's if it's wet or if there's like a little like bit of meat in there in the middle. Um, so yeah, make sure to keep them clean. After you get them into the bags, I like to lay them onto a half sheet pan to just to make sure that nothing drips out of the bags onto my fridge. And most of the time during the curing process, the meat becomes firm, but that actually didn't happen this time around. Um, it gave off really good, a really good amount of moisture making its own brine in the bag, which is definitely what we're looking for. But I do wonder if a short hanging time after a slaughter means that this stuff had like extra moisture in it and therefore didn't cure quite the same way. If you want to see more about how the slabs were during, doing during the cure, check out my dry aging check-in live streams. While I was checking in on dry aging pork, I would also check in on the curing bacon and overhaul it. That's just when you check in on the status of your bacon and flip the bags um, so that the slabs cure evenly. This is at right about three days or so and you can see that the meat has gone quite a bit darker. Um, this is about as dark as it got though. Um, and you can see there's even like a little bit of moisture and condensation on the inside of the bag. Um, but it didn't, again, it didn't get very firm which was kind of troublesome to me. Um, but these turned out great so I'm not super worried about it. These cure for about 10 days or so and then I roasted them in the oven until they reached an internal temperature of about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is what they look like after they chilled down. with how these turned out. So let's talk about how I have used these so far. I actually gave one slab away as a birthday gift and my friend seemed super happy about it. The best results we got came when we scored the skin perpendicular to our bacon slicing. With a long sharp knife, you can get the same kind of slices that you would get from commercial bacon. We started them in a low cast iron pan and let the meat get super crispy. Then, when enough fat had rendered out of the bacon, we turned the slice so that the skin was frying in the melted fat. And that's how we got the puffy, super crispy, cracklin style skin on there. So with every strip of bacon, it was like a tiny sliver of cracklins. These breakfast sandwiches were amazing and the background is our kind of messy living room because my partner was spoiling me and cooking this bomb breakfast while I enjoyed coffee on the couch. What a life! Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, y'all. I really hope that if you have never tried making bacon at home, this emboldens you to try it. Again, if you don't have a smoker, homemade bacon is still actually worth the extra effort. And if you have made bacon before, I hope you got at least a couple new tips out of this video. We're still working through this whole dang pig we have in this apartment, so if you want to come along for the ride and see what to do if you ever have a whole pig at home, subscribe to this channel now and drop me a like if you can. Thanks again so much, especially to the Patreons who help make this happen every week. Stay safe out there you guys, get boosted, and I'll see y'all next week for more Butchery 101. Bye!